Hi guys, I bought this grinding pin from uh, the Northridge Fix webshop and this is the grinding pin version number two and I paid like 37.95 US dollars for it. So in this video I'll show you what's inside the box here and uh, I will show you how the grinding pin works and of course in the end we will do a teardown of the device so we can see what's uh, hiding inside. So let's have a look here in the box what we actually get. So we have here the grinding pen itself and we have a USB-C charging cable and we have a small bag here with seven different tools. So the grinding pen itself is quite nice. So this is made in this aluminium housing. So it's uh, very nice to have in your hand. And the weight of it is only 41 grams. So it's also very easy to maneuver around with. So here on the back side, you see a USB-C port for charging. And uh, we have an on off button here and we have some LEDs that indicates the state of the grinding pin itself. So the on off switch is just here, just press once. And then you select different modes. So there are three speeds, 1000, 5000 and 18000 RPM. So 1000, 5000 and 18,000 RPM. And if you press the button within three seconds, it just selects the next mode. And if you wait more than three seconds, then it will just immediately turn off the next time you press the button. So we can go to 5000 RPM, wait more than three seconds, and then the device will turn off. The three LEDs down here shows you how much charge is left on the, the grinding pen. And uh, if we load the pen itself, you can see how much load there is on it. And you can see there's a red LED in the top. And that's when we overload the grinding pen. And if we do that in a longer period, it will actually shut off itself to protect it. And uh, it's quite easy to change or insert the tool. You can just have a look here. And let's try with this one. You simply just press it in here like that. And now it's working. And uh, we can take the next tool. And uh, just press it in here. So let's have a look on the different tools we have here in the box. So here we have the seven different tools. And this is a tool for punching a hole into a PCB, for example. It's very fine tip, it's only 0.2 millimeters. And the shaft here uh, is 2.35 millimeters. And this is a standard for these grinding tools. So I think you can find a lot of different tools that will actually fit into the grinding pen. And here we have a 0.6 millimeter grinding tool. And there is one a bit larger. This is a 0.8 millimeter. And uh, there's a larger one here again. This is 2.35 millimeters. And here we have a tool for cutting into different materials. And uh, there are two tools for polishing. And we have this one here as well. 
So let's try and use the different tools on some PCBs that I have. All right, so I have this PCB here. Let's try and grind off some of the solar mask. I have here the finest tip. So let's see what we can do here. Try this trace. We can try and clean it and see the final result. So you see, it's very easy to remove some of the solar mask. Very precise. And we can try and remove the solar mask from this pad here. And it's okay to drive it at the lower speed. See if it makes a difference to run it at maximum speed. I think it's a bit harder to actually control it. Let's try another tool. Have the largest one here. If we want to remove something from a larger area. Oh, that's very easy. That's quite cool. All right. Let's try one of the other tools. I have this, the tool here that can cut something away. I have this connector here. If we can try and remove the pin. Just try and do it at a higher speed. And the pin is gone. And I have this integrated circuit here where we lost a pin and I would like to solder on some a new wire or something so we can try and get it working again. 
and we can see if we can remove some of the material here. And then get down to the metal. Try and remove some of the material. It's still a bit way down there. There we have it. So it's quite soft to drill in this. Like that and now it's possible to solder a wire onto the integrated circuit again cool and we have this you can try and remove some of this plastic here on top and see if that's possible and this connector, let's try and see if we can cut off some of the corner here. Try and put a bit more speed on it. Like that. So it's quite easy to do precision work with this tool. Alright, let's try and um, see what happens when we charge the device. So let's try and charge the grinding pin. I have here my multifunction USB-C charger. Let's try and hook that up to the meter here. And uh, connect the USB-C port. And we see that the device immediately starts charging. So we can see that the initial charging current here is like 500 milliamps. And uh, inside the grinding pen there is a lithium battery with a capacity of 380 milliampere hours. So the charging time will be approximately 40 to 45 minutes. 
and it's even possible to use the grinding pin while it's being charged. Cool. So let's have a look inside the grinding tool. There's just one small screw here holding it all together. So if we can take that out. And then it should be possible just to slide off the aluminium housing here. Just like that. And uh, here we see a battery and a PCB. And it seems that the two plastic parts are held together with this ring out here. But let's try and see if we can pry out the PCB. Yeah, and the two wires to the motor is in there. So what can we see here? We have the USB connector, USB-C connector. There are some fat here that can maybe turn on the power from the USB port. There's a footprint for a programming header for the micro. So the micro, that's an STC micro branded one. And uh, it's an STC 8G 1K 08. <clears throat> so that's with eight kilobytes of flash and one kilobyte RAM and four kilobytes of EEPROM. And then we have the LEDs, the blue LEDs and the red one. And uh, the button. And here we have a current sensing resistor. Maybe that's for the charger, battery charger, or for the overload protection of the motor. And in here we have an alpha and omega AO4821. And uh, that's a dual P channel MOSFET. So maybe, I don't know if that's for the charging or for the, the driver for the motor itself. And on the back side, we see the battery. So that's a 280 milliamp battery. I actually thought it was 380, but it's only 280. One watt hour, 3.7 volt lithium. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Bye.